Welcome to part two of our river lot adventure. Yes! <laughs> yes! We're fishing aboard a carp boat, which is called Felicity. It's incredible. Got two beds inside, a cooker, a fridge, and it's got all the equipment we need for this type of fishing. In part one, we got off to a good start. On the first night, we caught a really small common, and on the second night, we caught a mirror about 25, maybe a little bit bigger. But since then, we've had a couple of blank nights been searching high and low up and down the river and to be honest it's been difficult it's been difficult to locate them the water is fairly cut fairly colored like the rivers often are at this time of year in Europe but at the same time we know there's lots of big fish in this section <laughs> I got no idea what that is <laughs> but it's fucking epic apparently one in four carp in this particular stretch is over 20 kilos um, but naturally where the big fish live they tend to be a little bit harder to catch because they're lower stock that said, we are on the position that Joshim, our guide, fished about a week before we arrived. He'd done a single night, and in the first evening, being on this very spot, he caught a 35 pound mirror. So there's a lot of talk, a lot of big carp talk, but it's time to get the rods out and stop talking a big game and finally put one of these big river carp on the bank. very much uncalled for. It's been ages just dropping it on the cleanest, loveliest bit of gravel. Spread a good amount of bait around it. And within two minutes, Mr. Chubb has got it. Are you kidding me? It's not caught. But I've only been out there two minutes. It's mad. You know, I didn't see a single fish out there while I'm placing the rod, can see the bottom. And then within two minutes, of throwing all that bait out and placing it. It's hung itself. See how much bait I put out there? How did you find the one with the hook in it that fast? I'm gonna try a rod a little bit further up here and hopefully the same thing won't happen because that could be very stressful tonight. One of the first realisations for me, having not done a lot of fishing on rivers previously, obviously the flow is something that you've never, re I've never really had to contend with before. And I imagine in certain conditions, the river can be next to impossible to fish. Um, if it's in full flood, then yeah, it'd be very, very difficult to fish effectively. But the other big problem that is a really, really big problem is the amount of nuisance fish. Now, rivers are natural environments and it's a mixed fishery full of all sorts of different species. You know, there's bream, there's chub, there's barbel, there's catfish. Um, and even big baits such as 20 mil boilies or bigger, um, tiger nuts, things like that. Stuff that back home, you know, when you're fishing, lakes have got a few bream and tension. You know, those sort of things generally get you around um, the nuisance fish issues that you face, whereas the, the mouth on the chub, you know, is absolutely humongous, got powerful crushing throat teeth that's, that I've only just sort of learned in the, from fishing the river saying in the previous video, um, they love tiger nuts. They're obviously, their teeth are obviously strong enough to, to crush through them and they enjoy eating them just like the carp do. So it's a, it's a big, big, big problem. You can't keep rigs, and bait in the water and be sure that the carp are, are going to find it. Obviously, I'm sure when the carp come in, they'll bully the, the other fish off of the spot, but it's the, it's the your bait is not lay, laying in wait. When you pre-bait, for example, you're hoping that the carp find it, build some confidence in it, and then you come in and clean up on top of that pre-bait. But for, for all I know, all the bait that we put in this swim before we arrived could have been just smashed up by a chub, hence why we caught one so quickly. Um, it's just, I don't want to say I'm lazy, 
as I am a little bit, but you know, catching to catch 10 chub before you catch carp seems like a lot of hard work. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what to suggest as the um, like the alternative. You know, you could come with 25 mil boilies as opposed to 20s, but I still think that the the chub would eat them. You know, the, a, a chub's mouth, you know, the size of the chub we're catching is is like that, and you're not going to use start using boilies too big to get in their mouth. Otherwise, they're going to end up being too big for the carp as well. So it's just. That is the reality of the river from, from what I'm seeing. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna go through excessive and insane amounts of bait um, when you're pre-baiting and fishing blind. I'm sure when you see carp in an area, say in the summer when the water's clearer maybe, um, you find carp around the weed, I imagine you won't have so much trouble with the nuisance fish in that situation. But when you're fishing in coloured water, pre-baiting in areas where you're hoping the carp might be, you're definitely, definitely going to run into um, nuisance fish trauma. Right then, just about to turn it in for the evening. Um, as it's got dark, you know, there's all the lights in the building opposite, um, sort of lighting up the river in front. It looks really, really cool. Um, but on the fishing front, I've um, spread my three rods sort of there. On this corner where we're anchored up, there's um, sort of like a sandy sort of apron, and it's all covered in um, like mussel shells. So obviously, fish of all types probably come in and eat mussels along here because um, it's just like a shell graveyard, which is usually a good sign. But yeah, I'm basically sat here hoping for some traffic. You never know. You never know. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Feels like a fucking a massive result after a couple of nights playing. No, I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm absolutely shaking. Come on. Oh, Get in there. Oh, I needed that. I really needed that. Oh, hang on, we're floating away. We're floating down the street. We've got to get back. I don't think I've ever been so happy with a 20 pound common. Very, very hard one this, from an extremely wild river in France, the river lot. Um, you know, it's been tough last few days, struggled to find the fish, and location has been like extremely difficult. But in the middle of the night, completely out of the blue, it ripped off, dragged me through a tree, and somehow we've got it back. Very, very happy. We've now relocated to the opposite end of the section, behind the island, and we baited this swim yesterday and the day before. On each occasion, put five kilos of boilies and a couple of kilos of tiger nuts, so 10, 15 kilos of bait over the last sort of 72 hours out there. Um, but on the way to this swim, I got a message from a couple of French guys that were fishing the week before, and they'd done quite well. They had at least five fish, um, and lost some. Um, and one of the spots that they've done well from is just back from, just up from the bridge on the way to this area. Um, it looks really, really good there. Obviously, when you get information that um, fish have been caught there recently, that is red hot info on a wild venue like this. It looks pretty good. Um, so I, I actually baited it yesterday a little bit, just trickled a little bit of bait along there, just a few tigers and whatnot. And then when we've come back past it this morning on route to this behind the island swim, I've put, I'm going to say half a bucket of tigers. So what's that? Four, four or five kilos of tigers, very thinly spread, like where he caught, a little bit further down to where I'd seen this clip in the bush. Um, and I think that's going to be our position for tomorrow night. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to obviously try, if we have it away tonight here behind the island, then um, by all means we might stay. But So we're going to fish here. Over the 15 kilo bait we put out over the last 72 hours, see how it goes, and if nothing happens, or even if it does happen, we're probably going to relocate back up to that spot. Well, 
Well, that's all of the rods in position. The right hand rod here is fished across to the far bank. It's sort of got a big green bush. And then just to the left of the green bush, it's sort of the, the bank sort of dips in a little bit. And I can just make out the bottom, it's a little bit sandy as it sort of was coming up a little bit there. It's in sort of 1.5 meters, it's probably the shallowest rod. Um, again, clipped on the elastic band under the bushes over there so that hopefully the fish will bolt out and I'll get a, a savage drop back. The right hander of these twos is fished across to that fallen tree over there. Now that's, that fallen tree already had a clip on it. So I don't know if it's a good spot. It's certainly somewhere where carp anglers have fished before. Um, there's quite a bit of wood in the water there. It looks pretty gnarly to be fair. Um, but I've set my rig upstream only like a couple of meters with the line being sort of pushed down by the flow up to the clip. And the theory is obviously when the fish picks up the lead hooks itself, the tension is going to be coming from the snag side, which should cause the fish to bolt out away from the snags. But you know, that's the theory in, in practice. We'll have to find out if it's going to happen. Um, yeah, they're, they're out there well. I've, I've positioned them nicely. They're on nice spots. But what it ultimately boils down to is, are we going to get carp traffic tonight? Just keep doing what you're doing, it's not going to work here. Do it big this time. Hang on, what we need to do is work out where the line's going. I'm on the end of the stick. Look, look, we're up here, look. Okay. Towards me, towards the yellow folk, keep going towards the yellow folk, keep coming towards the yellow folk, keep coming. Keep coming. Got him, he's got him. He's got him. Who won nine? Late April. How about that? Busy all night. What is this? Oh, it's a tiddly, tiddly carp. Whee! We're in the crash, it seems. A small carp swim. Well, here he is. The biggest of four takes last night. Three to the bank um, and two really small ones. We had a small one at first light and a small one in the night as well. Um, Obviously there's definitely fish here, but I get the feeling that it's smaller males hanging around in the spawning area, waiting for spawning time. You know, we're, I've seen it before in lots of other venues that people always remember where the fish spawn and they come to those areas to, in anticipation of big hits of fish. And often the, those that get there early catch the smaller fish um, and the bigger ones are further afield, still out feeding in preparation for spawning. So, we're going to bait up this swim because it's definitely carp around but we're going to head back to the, um, the area we baited yesterday, get on those spots for tonight and if it doesn't happen we'll come back here and if it does we'll make a decision on the final night. Let's get it. 